Welcome to Sometimes There's Side-Eye, a podcast about two friends having real and unfiltered conversations about dogs and people. Listen as we talk about our lives with dogs, training, behavior, share some laughs, and a whole lot of banter. I'm Heather. And I'm Christy. And what are we talking about today, Christy? We're talking about cooperative care, which is exciting. That is exciting. But if you haven't done so already, go ahead and pause your podcast. Feel free to subscribe, download, share us, and then rate us so we can reach a bigger audience. And then just rejoin us for this super cool conversation. I love it. All right. So cooperative care. I'm excited because I am pretty new to cooperative care within the last, I would say like year, I guess, mm. year, year and a half. To, really? To really... Uh, Okay, you had yeah. Julius for nine months. Yeah, that's what I was going to say okay. nine months. Like, and then I was like, nope. Nope. I would <laughs> say like two to three years. Two years, probably. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's exciting. Like once you, there's a lot of steps in cooperative care. Okay, I'm going to give a fancy pants definition. Cooperative care involves training an animal to not only tolerate handling and husbandry procedures, but to be an active, willing participant in these experiences. So that's very cool. Yeah. I know you have a lot of experience with cooperative care, right? I mean, I feel like I have a fair amount of experience. I don't know. She's, everybody can't see her face, but she's giving me a face. Okay. So, so yeah, (laughs) she gave me a side eye. Okay. So for anyone who doesn't know me well, I have a real issue. We're just going to get it on the table. Heather has a real obsession with nails and it's a real problem. And I blame my mother because she was a dog groomer when I was a young child. I do my dog's nails every week. So when, when she says a real issue, I mean, literally like every text message or email or whatever chain, if somebody shows her a picture of their dog and the foot is in it, they say, Heather, please ignore the nails, but look at this picture. I'm such a freaking judgy bitch. Oh my God. This is horrible. We just, we just know we need to approach it. And now I'm like, Heather, did you see that dog's nails? Yeah. I've like turned my friends into judgy nail bitches. Like I don't, this is really, really terrible. I swear to God, people, if you show me pictures of your dogs, like I'm not going to judge your nails, but I have a problem. (laughs) I have a true obsession. So anyway, you're just going to own your issues, your nail issues. I'm going to own my issues. I'm going to talk to my therapist about it and we are going to move on. But seriously, I know that nails can be really, really difficult. And we all joke around about it. And we talk about how how I have an obsession with it, but I have also had many, many dogs who I haven't been able to do their nails in a really easy way. And so I do totally understand. And part of that obsession is also trying to help people and give them tips on how to kind of make it easier. And some of that might involve cooperative care, depending on the dog, depending on what the situation is. I do understand it from Tiago's standpoint. I have retrained the way I do his nails, I think five times at this point, because every time he gets an elbow procedure, it sort of becomes this thing. And he's a dog that I started from a puppy doing his nails. So I, I don't want anyone to feel like, oh my gosh, like judged about this because I've been there and I can show you some pictures. We might actually show some pictures of some of my dogs who have bad nails. We're not going to show <laughs> pictures of dogs' nails. I'm just going to, I'm in charge of the Instagram account. I'm just going to tell you we're not doing this. Christy's like that <laughs> happening. Um, But seriously, (laughs) and when we adopted Tater, his nails were really bad when he came home because I was told immediately by his foster mom that he hated having his nails done. It took four people, adults, to do his nails the first time. If you have seen Tater getting his nails done now, it is a very, very cooperative experience. And post that because it is adorable. Yeah. And it's something, it's a behavior that I've built over time. And I'm very lucky also that Tater is super food motivated and food comes before everything else. Doing his nails is a really easy experience at this point. In fact, today I tried to see if I went to the laundry room and got a nail file, 
and ripped open the plastic, would that be enough for him to get up and run to his position to get ready for nails? The answer is yes. So let's go through a little bit with cooperative care because I feel like we're kind of getting off in the weeds a little bit. So uh, with cooperative care, it's building a routine where your dog can tell you yes or no and say, like, I can't do this right now or I'm ready, go ahead. So Lucy, so my last dog also took four adult humans to restrain her and she was 40 pounds to do nails. I went in doing Lucy's nails and it was not much better. Like I could do them by myself, but it was, it was a struggle. It was like a wrestling match and a lot of sweat and tears. I think on both of our parts at this point, Lucy, literally, um, I get the clippers out. I show her what we're doing. She runs to a certain spot on the couch. She lays down, puts her paws over the edge of the couch, and then I file or I trim the nails and there's lots of treats involved. And when she's not feeling it, she, she does take her paw back and she like, lets me know, Hey, I can't do this right now. Like for whatever reason, and we do a treat scatter and I just wait and see if she wants to come back for more or if she is done. And I really kind of thought when we started doing cooperative care, I was like, there's no way this dog gets it. Like she's just coming up here because this is where she's getting treats. But then the one day she pulled her paw back several times. So I did a treat scatter and she didn't come back. And I was like, and, oh, and you were like, oh, it. oh, like you, you understand what's happening. Like you understand there's a give and take. And I've had to be really careful with Lucy because she is so treat motivated mm. that I'm not bargaining something that's worth more than her life to her mm. for nails. So, so treats are I did start with higher stake treats just to to get the ball going, but I've lowered those um, treats to like hard chews, like uh, milk bones, nothing super fancy or exciting. Occasionally, like there'll be a good treat thrown in there too, but it's not like she but, can, she has the power to say no. Yeah. And that's if what her I was treat gonna say. is too good, she doesn't, she doesn't have the self-control or the, the willpower to say no. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's an internal conflict and I don't want that with cooperative care. So cooperative care, it's important that there's not an internal conflict happening with them where they can't say no on their own. It's a partnership and a conversation and, and it takes a lot of patience on the human's part to be respectful when your dog says, no, thank you. But when you're able to actually do that and respect it, it's amazing the difference it makes when you're trying to do those tasks as you work through the training. Yeah. And I think what we hear so often is that dogs have had this horrible experience with nails or mm-hmm. or baths or whatever it is for years, the brushing or anything, any of those husbandry things for years. And, and it takes several, like several grown adults to hold a dog down. And what cooperative care, in my opinion, it, it's a lot of front loading Mm. of the behavior. And so it's patience on that end, but it's a lot less patience in the long run, Mm -hmm. because honestly, like it doesn't take me calling three other adults to come hold my dog while I trim her nails. It doesn't take a wrestling match. It's literally a conversation of, Hey, do you want, can we do your nails? They're kind of long. Yes or no. Okay. Can great. We got through five. Let's reset. Can you do the other one? Oh, you can't do the back ones right now. Okay. Let's try tomorrow or let's try next week. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal. Her nails take me like 10 minutes Mm -hmm. to do now. And when it started though, it was, it was a process. And we're going to give resources on where you guys can look for info on how to start the process. So we won't leave you hanging there, but yes, it is a process. It is a process. And so when we started, it would take 20 days, 21 days before I could trim all her nails. All of them. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it would really be like, we might get through one Mm -hmm. or I might just be able to set the file on her nail. Mm -hmm. And that was as far as we got one day. And that's okay. And that's all she had in her. And okay. I think the biggest hurdle as a human is to not push it. Yes. Um, Because it's so easy to do. It's so easy. It really is. And that's the case with not even just nails, just in general. It's so easy to cross over that line. I try to remind myself 
when I'm doing this type of thing that it would be better to stop early, you know, and absolutely, it would be better to only get through one and for tomorrow yes. to be a new day. And honestly, yeah. if it takes you, you know, 20 days to get through all the nails, you do one nail a day, start back over. Hey, that's not too bad. The next time you might get through two and, you know, get back around, at least mm -hmm. it's getting done. Whereas when you're just like, I can't do it at all. And, or it's mm -hmm. such a terribly frustrating, you know, it's just a really unhealthy experience for everybody. Honestly, I hate it when I am like arguing with my dog over doing something that I really feel is really important. And now care is important from just a their orthopedic health in general and the yeah. way they walk and everything else. So it's not just Heather has an issue and likes to keep pretty nails. It, it goes yeah. deeper than that, especially for me yeah. with dogs who have orthopedic problems. And it doesn't, it's not just nails. I mean, we're focusing on nails because I have issues, but something else I wanted to say where I've used cooperative care and it doesn't have to be anything fancy is with teaching Tiago a stand stay, which he had already had, but adding in a simple lick on a cheese stick while he's getting some sort of vet care done. He was getting physical therapy for his elbow. That required him to stand, I believe it was 12 minutes at a time to get ultrasound therapy. He didn't love it for whatever reason. He was like, I don't really love this whole thing. And so I taught him to stand in a certain position in front of our ottoman and me to hold a cheese stick, sort of like a popsicle or a push pop. I just taught him to lick that cheese stick. And I've been able to transfer that if he gets any sort of injection at the vet, if they need to check something, if they need to take blood, I have been able to transfer that to all those different things. And that is a really, really easy thing to teach. And it's a very useful tool in so many different scenarios. So mm -hmm. cooperative care doesn't have to be this fancy involved thing. It can be something as simple as that. Yeah, definitely. The key is if you're really going to do cooperative care, mm -hmm. honoring the no. Yes. So if you're teaching that lick on a cheese stick mm -hmm. and they're great at the house and they're great mm -hmm. in the park and they're great at Costco, Go. No, you can't buy Not a Costco. Costco. <laughs> don't don't, don't take it. your dog to Costco, please. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. Home Depot, those, wherever. They're great there. But for whatever reason at the vet, mm -hmm. they say a hard no. Mm -hmm. If it's not a necessity that you get it done then, it might be a situation where you say, I'm going to pay you the, the $50 visit fee and honor that I'm training a process. Yes. yes. And we're going to leave and reschedule. That's hard. It's hard to do. And yet it's like, if you think about it, like $50 for your relationship with a, your dog. I think most people who are listening to this, if you're interested in enough to listen to a podcast about dogs, you're probably yeah. like really care about your dog. So I would say most people would probably say 50 bucks to invest in my dog's relationship is not a big deal. It literally blew my mind when somebody said like, I will pay the vet visit and I will leave if it's yes. not. I was like, wait, what? What? <laughs> like, of course, like that's a thing you could do. And it had never crossed my mind. Yeah. Also, I think with cooperative care that the really cool thing about it is when you actually do it and let your dog say no, they say yes more often. Oh my gosh. It's so true. It's like giving them that option. And Lucy does not make good choices on her own. Let me tell you. However, given choices. I don't know why you talk shit care, about her. She's so good. She's talking shit about choices. Lucy. I know. <laughs> given choices with cooperative care, she says yes more often than not. Yeah. But when we go to the vet, because I know she will always say no, not because the vet's mean or anything. They're just, I do things to mitigate the amount of stress she feels, but I don't give her a choice because I know when we're there, one in Arizona, there's not a lot of vets. So if I don't get her in, then it's going to be three to four weeks before I can make well, another vet appointment. And Those the thing is things, when it's a non-negotiable, you don't ask. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't ask a lot of times when we go to the vet, but I do, I do try to mitigate some of that stress with treats and mm -hmm. different things. 
and just ask her, can you take a treat right now? Do you want this? No. Okay. That's okay. You still have to stand here, but if you want a consolation prize, you get all the consolation prizes mm-hmm. you want. And there's yeah. a difference between a consolation prize and a, an asking yes. to do something. Yeah, because when you are training cooperative care, it's in a really, really special set of circumstances and you're putting different things on cue. So the picture looks a certain way that your dog understands. And so if you are, because there are times where your dog has to go, right? They, they have to, you don't have a choice. If you're, if you're in that situation, that is not necessarily a time to employ it because it's an emergency or they have to get whatever test done, you know, whatever that might be. Having said that, in relation to cooperative care, I do think that there's also a level of teaching your dog certain behaviors that just make a vet visit easier, you know, and and for example, Tiago's stance day, he does know if you sit a certain way on the floor, a certain rollover command to expo- expose his belly. And that's super useful when getting an ultrasound. And I-, I would say to everyone, if you have trained those behaviors and your dog is really solid on something, I mean, I'm saying solid, you know, not where where you don't think that they can handle it in the situation. I would, I always tell Actually, it happened today. I had a new vet tech at the internal medicine doctor. And I said to her, have you ever had Tiago before? And she said, no, I don't know him. And I was like, okay, well, can I run through his, you know, short list of commands that you might need when you take him in the back? And she was like, sure. And so I just ran through, you know, he knows his normal sit stay, but gave her like a short rundown, handed her a stick of cheese. And I said, you are now his favorite person carry on. Mm -hmm. And I sent her, you know, sent her down the hallway. And I think that that also is something that's really useful and no one should be afraid to say to their vet, Hey, my dog gets really freaked out when X happens, you know, like, or my dog is really good about X because it can help with the overall picture of your dog feeling comfortable and then nothing untoward happening because somebody didn't know something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My vet is um, always happy and and surprised still with the amount of cheese and food I bring in. (laughs) And they're like, they bring me back like half a stick of cheese. And they're like, yeah, this was super helpful. I know. I know. Yeah. Like, let's make Let's make life a little easier for our dogs if we can. Yeah. So So if your dog has a favorite treat or whatever that is safe for them to have at the vet, by all means, take it along. Definitely. One thing I would suggest with cooperative care. So kind of going back to like the in-home when we're Mm -hmm. trying to do it, like where do you even start? And so Heather's really great at breaking things down, like slicing. So there's been several times where I'm like, Heather, I'm not getting this training. Lucy's not responding to it. Like, I don't know what my next step is. And she's like, you're just not slicing it down far enough. See, so like this slight movement, then we, we treat for it or whatever. So what I've found to be helpful is video yourself and what your procedure is. Yes. Either have someone video you, set it up where you're maybe in the rooms where like you can see multiple angles, whatever it takes, but video yourself because if you fake it, you're going to miss steps. Yeah. So, so what I found is when I faked it, I would just go in and like grab the nail file and come out and like have the treats and whatever. Okay. In real life, like I go into the laundry room. I have to dig a little. I get the clippers, but then I forget the nail file like nine times out of 10. So then I go back. I take two steps out and take two steps back and have to get that. And then, oh, and then I I want these treats back here. And so there's a little digging. Mm -hmm. And so there's all these steps that I don't even realize are happening Mm -hmm. in in normal life. So I'm not able to replicate them because I don't realize that they're happening. But guess who does know they're happening? The The dogs. The dogs know all the steps. They know when you're thinking about trimming their nails. Hence, Tater listening to me open the stupid nail filing packaging today. Exactly. Exactly. And so that, I would say, videoing it so that you know how to slice it down. So if your dog is a dog who freaks out because they know where the nail file and the nail clippers are, 
you can slice it down to yep. as little as walking into the room. And then if your dog is hanging with you, like treat them. And then Such a good that's point. all you do for that day. No, it could take a long time before you even get to nails or brushing or, or any type of grooming. It might be mm-hmm. a long process to slice it down enough, but honestly, I found it most useful to make the slivers so easy, each next stage so easy that it was like almost impossible for Lucy to fail. Yeah. Like, oh, today you're only taking like two steps into the the laundry room. Cool. Okay. Well, that doesn't seem so threatening. Oh, you have them in your hand today. Okay, cool. And that's what I did with Julius too. Cause he was nervous when I would Mm -hmm. show him the nail clippers. He was, oh, poor guy. He was so nervous. And so I would show it to him and then he'd get lots of treats and then we'd put them away. And he was like, Okay, well, they don't seem so threatening, I guess. And so then he'd watch Lucy and then I'd show him the nail clippers. And, and then I was able to like tap one nail with it, but not actually do anything. And then he got lots of treats and love. And then we put him away and he was like, oh, okay, well, that doesn't seem so bad. Like nothing bad happened to me. So, mm-hmm. okay. And Lucy's getting a lot of food that I really want to participate in. And so he was more willing than nothing bad happened to him repeatedly. Mm-hmm. And so we broke it down and it honestly with him, it had to be like, show him the clippers, go halfway to the nail one day and then be done and then go all the way to where it touched the nail real quickly. And then we're done. You know, even my hand on his feet, his feet were really sensitive. So that was a process, but you can do that with, if your dog is a dog who hates baths, you can, and my Mm -hmm. last dog was that way. You could do that process too. All dogs in my house get lick mats Mm -hmm. when they go for a bath. They also get leading up to that. They get a choice, like, can you get in the tub today? Thanks for getting in the tub. Here's some treats. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, here's your lick mat. And now Lucy just sees the lick mat come out. There's only one time we use it. We use it only for the tub. So she just you only herself. give lick mats for tub. That's it. Yeah. You're the yeah. devil. Uh, no. I'm Lucy not. should have lick mats for everything. Anyway, no, carry on. Licking really annoys me. <laughs> I do but if she does but if she doesn't finish it in the tub she gets to finish it outside of the tub mm-hmm. I I'm guess a nice that's person. a consolation prize but I, I she do think know. I do think it's a good point like all the different ways that you can use cooperative care the one thing that I would say is you can also be creative in how you approach things and I say that as Tiago as an example, because I've had to retrain his nails so many times. And Mm -hmm. originally I did every in quote air quotes, everything right. When he was a puppy training him and I dremeled his nails when he was a puppy. And I do truly believe that the vibration on his elbow was a real issue, but I, it took me a while to put that together. And so the, the dremel was pretty much a non-starter at that point. Dremel is a non-starter for Lucy. We tried it for Tiago Tater too. Yep. For Tater too, the noise is way, I would, I wouldn't even do it to him. Just as an example of being creative for Tiago at this point, I use a scratch board for Mm -hmm. his front paws. So we do scratch board first, front feet, and then I file his back feet. And then I have a certain set of of, um, steps that we do so that I can then in a different position, in a different area, clean up the front feet because of course I need them to be perfect with a file. So the process can look differently. And I had to retrain this just out of necessity. But my point is maybe it doesn't look conventional, but it might be something that really works for your dog. And so that might be changing your location. It might be putting them on a table. It might be laying them down with, you know, on their favorite bed. It could, it could be all these different scenarios. Open your mind when you're thinking about cooperative care. Not just, oh, I need to do this in a certain spot, you know, try to think about it in a different set of circumstances that may start the conversation between you and your dog off on a better foot, pun intended, and see if that makes a difference for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, get get creative, get curious too. Like Heather got Mm -hmm. curious about, okay, what's changed. Mm -hmm. And it took a minute to figure out what it was that was causing the issue. But because she allowed her dog to say no, 
she was open to then having other options and other ideas and employing some of those training options. I think also allowing your pet to say no to something makes you be a little more creative. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there were definitely, I'm not going to lie. There were some serious times of frustration because I really yeah. like to be able to do my dog's nails by myself. I don't want to wait for someone else. Um, <laughs> so there were some real, like real times of frustration, but yes, definitely. Once I put it together and I was like, oh, that vibration has to be a problem on that elbow. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that sucks. I can completely yeah. understand why you're suddenly not wanting to do this. I would say as you're exploring cooperative care, there's a lot of ways to implement it. Like like we talked about the vet with grooming procedures, that kind of thing. One thing to keep in mind too with nail trims or or any anything is that when you're in this process of doing it, it's so important not to betray the dog's trust. If you know that your process is going to take three months to get through, this might be a time where you take the dog to the groomer, the vet to have their nails done so that you can continue your trust with your dog to build that and just pay for their nails to be done somewhere else so that you're not the one violating that trust during the time you're building that. Mm -hmm. And I would say, and if for some reason that is not possible for you, maybe your dog can't travel in the car or whatever the the reason might be, I would strongly urge you to, if you need to continue doing whatever the care item is, that you make sure that the picture looks completely different from your training process so that if at all possible, you can keep the training process in cooperative care and the process of doing whatever the thing might be completely different. That could be as simple as putting in eye drops, as ear drops, cleaning ears. Tater gets his face cleaned, his little nose wrinkle cleaned every morning. I have a very specific process of what that looks like, and he is awesome about letting me do it. It also includes eye drops because, well, bulldog. We have a whole system that is something that we have built. If it's not something that I can do, you know, in that particular process and set, either you need to make it look completely different or you need to say, hey, it's not happening because you you don't want to mess up exactly what Christy said. You don't want to mess up all the time and all of the energy that you're putting into this. Yeah, it's don't don't give. Don't pretend that there's a choice when there's not a choice. Yeah. Play the long game. Hope that they, yeah. Don't pretend there's a choice and hope they choose what you want. Yeah. And it never worked out that way. And cooperative care really is a long game because you are setting up and, and it might feel like a lot, but when you're starting off that way or or when you're getting started and this is just the way you do things going forward with every dog just think of all of the days weeks months and years of stress free husbandry that you can have with your pets going forward because i'll tell you this much the better you get at training cooperative care the easier it will get and the more creative you will get it will become easier with time and it will just make your relationships with your dogs and all of those things that need to be taken care of so much easier as life goes on and i would say in addition to videoing when you're learning what your process is right now, you know, video once you've started the cooperative care also, because a lot of times I'll be like, huh, there was nothing like Lucy didn't even seem stressed. And then all of a sudden she was like, I'm out. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh. and then I go back and watch and I'm like, you know what? This is what she did to show me she was uncomfortable and I missed it. Mm-hmm. And it's not always that black and white. But I think video a lot of times will help you see things that maybe you didn't see originally uh, in the moment. And more information is never a bad thing. And behavior is, is more information. So if your dog is giving you a behavior, it is information. We just have to try to decipher, if at all possible, what happened. And I agree, videoing the whole thing makes it easier for you to be able to kind of pick that apart and find what the trigger is or might have been. And triggers can be really small, you know, Mm -hmm. and it it depends on the dog, you know, like Tater has his noise sensitivities and they then 
he understands that something that's stainless steel makes that sound that scares him. So then visually stainless steel is now scary. And so Mm -hmm. it, it can be something where you don't even realize it in the moment. And then you watch back the video and you're like, oh, shoot, there was a stainless steel bowl over on the counter. I didn't even see it, (laughs) you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and it makes you realize where you can be a little more smooth or Mm. um, because how many of us have thought like "Ah, dance moves are amazing. And then somebody (laughs) shows you photos from the wedding and you're like, tequila is a liar. (laughs) This is very true. This is very true. Cooperative cares the same way. Like I'm so smooth. And then you watch it back and you're like, "Hmm, I'm a little clunky. Yeah. I might've been able to do better right there. And you might find, you might find areas where you didn't realize that your dog was giving permission and you missed it. You know, so it's really, it's a very nuanced thing. And I I think that there's a lot of value in, in using the video in your favor. And also understand that if you're the person who is building the cooperative care yourself, that that doesn't necessarily transfer to somebody else in the house who's going to then do that skill. So if you're family dynamic where two people are responsible for doing some of the husbandry tasks back and forth, then Mm -hmm. I would strongly encourage you both to be deeply involved in this process. I don't know what that looks like because it all falls on my shoulders, but (laughs) if you're in one of those type of families... If the kids are like, I really want to help with this, like you got to get the whole family involved because it looks different from each person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's get, let's talk about some resources. So when Mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to start with cooperative care, I purchased cooperative care, seven steps to stress-free husbandry, which is by Deborah Jones, PhD. Deborah Jones is pretty much the forefront of cooperative care. And you will, if you start looking into this, you're going to see her name everywhere. Her book is available on Amazon. And then she also has a free group on Facebook, which is an incredible resource. I just found out tonight, Christy didn't even know about it. So sad for you. So her group is- And I'm going to be a part of it now. (laughs) Oh yeah, you will. Her group is Cooperative Care with Deb Jones. And there are- so many smart people on this group. I can't even explain to you. And it is a really, really, I'm going to venture to say a really positive place on social media. (laughs) It really is. Mm -hmm. It gave me so many ideas on things to get started with, with Tiago. And it gave me different ideas of things to try. It encouraged me. I watched other people's videos and I was like, oh my gosh, this person's so smart. Look what they're doing. I cheered on different people. I mean, you can really just get as deep as you want to in this group. It's a super, super supportive community. So I would encourage you, if you are on Facebook, to get involved in that community if you're interested in cooperative care in general. And of course, we're going to link all of that stuff for everybody. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I would say even as you're learning, know that even if you screw it up, we yeah. we talk about not screwing it up, but yeah. even if you screw it up, it it's a it's still a kinder way to interact with your dogs mm-hmm. to attempt to give them a choice. Like mm-hmm. that's still a kinder way, even if I mess it up, to interact with Lucy mm-hmm. or Julius or you know or any dog. One of the things related to cooperative care, but also like big picture. One of the things that my journey with Christy through this whole podcast thing and, you know, beyond has come up and been so, so key for me is that we control everything about our dog's lives. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. We control when they go to the bathroom. We control when they eat. We can, I mean, we control everything about their lives. And when I sat with that for a minute, I was like, aren't there places I can give them some choice? And Mm -hmm. if I'm going to do something that I know might be uncomfortable for them, can't I find a way to at least make it more of a partnership, at least make it, make it more 
comfortable for them and give them the chance to give consent and say, yes, I'm, I'm okay with this right now. Because we all have bad days. Our dogs have bad days. And some days you're just not up for it. And so when I started thinking about it big picture and then sort of sat down and was like, wow, we control so much by all means, I can do this for my dog. Yeah. And I will say like, as you get kind of nerdy in it, you get excited because you see changes. And I would say, you know, if you're somebody who has to take your dog to a groomer or things like that, there may be times where you can't, your groomer or your, whoever your vet or whatever is not going to be on board with Mm consent-based training. And so then there's times where you might say, Hey, it's, it's better for me to do my own grooming, or I'm going to do these things in my home and then know that my dog just doesn't have a choice in these other things. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of finding that balance for you. And there's no right or wrong answer, but for me being able to trim my own dog's nails was huge. Like instead of having to take her in somewhere and then being able to build on that relationship then was huge for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, if I had a dog that needed to be groomed, I couldn't do it. <laughs> they would look, they would look terrible. I mean, we did talk about like, that time. That time yeah. that Christy tried to groom Jenny. <laughs> Sorry, Jenny. <laughs> so I, I would just encourage you to maybe start with a baby step and, you know, get get interested and get curious about cooperative care in general, definitely join the group, take a look at some of these crazy things people do all the way up to injections for their dogs and just watch some of these trained dogs get their daily, monthly injections, whatever it is, and just stand there and give consent and like happily walk away. Like it was nothing. It'll blow your mind. And it's really inspiring to figure out a way to do this for your dog and for you so that you can have a better relationship. Absolutely. I think we'll leave it there. Yeah. Who knew we could get so excited about cooperative care? Really? We both know because we get jammed about it. (laughs) We're so nerdy. (laughs) But we hope you enjoy our nerdiness with us. We hope so. And we will link the information for the group and for Mm -hmm. the book. And I think we'll also, I'm going to link up the files that I use uh, to file my dog's nails. Also, yeah. And also the fancy nail clippers, the Miller's nail clippers, which cut like butter. So we'll give you some, some tip stuff too. Oh, Christy's shaking her head being like, they're not that great. I mean, they're fine. They're They're fine. fine. They're not like, they're not like those nail files though. Those nail files. The files are bomb. Amazing. (laughs) I know. So we'll link up everything for you guys. And we appreciate you giving us a listen once again, and we will talk to you in two weeks. And in the meantime, check us out on Instagram. uh, uh, Sometimes there's side eye. Oh my God. I didn't have to remind you. No, I, I remembered the handle and everything. Yeah. Oh, and are you going to share the video of Tater getting his nails done? Oh, yes. Send me that video. (laughs) So everyone can see it. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.